<laughs> it's supposed to start, but look, I've been writing the notes for this show today. I can hardly see them, so I'm laughing at myself, and I'm thinking, <laughs> if I can't see them, how is this all going to work? Well, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Prosper Taruinga, and I'm really, really hoping your week is off to a fantastic start. Um, yeah, every day, as you know, at 2 p.m., we go in and we just... Start talking about stuff that would help you start, scale, and grow your own online business, all right? And um, you might be wondering why I do this every single day. It's because it's a learning uh, strategy I have imparted on myself. And obviously, it really does help me reach out to people that I might be able to um, help. Francisco Sanchez, it's 9 p.m. over there, and it's 2 p.m., uh, in, in Australia right now, so that gets to tell you the illusion of time, okay? Right, and I mine. I don't want to answer that question because it's a non question. If you don't have anything else to do, just get off my life. Thank you so much. Anyway, guys, I help coaches and consultants to actually serve um, their uh, clients and so that you can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable and if you saw the beginning of the um, uh, show I was trying to write down notes so that we get started Peter Combi how's it going and Nkoma Kao so you say Baba all right, so guys, without further ado, we've got 30 minutes of really, really explosive stuff that we need to cover, and the main reason why people actually get to pay you. And Nicole, thank you so much for tuning in, my love. Hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm loving it. All right, I want you guys to realize this, that people don't buy what you do, People buy why, right? People, so you need to stop selling the what aspect of what you do and the what really is, um, you know, the features and benefits and all the bells and whistles of what anything can possibly do. People buy why, what's in it for them? Why would this benefit me? Why do I need it? Why should I part with my money? And etc etc okay and that's the reason why if you notice the show that we did yesterday a lot of people are failing in business because we are too engrossed or we are too stuck in or we're too romantic about our product and we're not really looking at why does somebody really pay me money to be here why will somebody actually need to be um listening to this video right now why 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 okay i think simon senic did a really really good video about it at ted at TEDx talk that he talked about the reason why some other companies do better than the others is because they start with why okay so i hope i'm not going to butcher the topic here and um you know leave leave a few things that i haven't touched but this is something that came to me this morning exactly um, when I was talking to one of my clients. Um, they are a finance coach. So this is what their story was. They're like, oh, everybody needs to know how their finances go. Everybody needs to be financially free. And I'm like, why is that important to them? Right? He didn't realize that people don't care about the whole process of you know being financially free what they want is is, is the lifestyle it comes with it's the time that it, it it brings them it's the opportunities that money opens up for them okay so you know that just got me thinking and talking about um you know to him and it opened up you know a um a light bulb in his head and i thought maybe it's the best thing for me to come through on a live session and talk about that today now nicole says i come here to learn my marketing strategies that's pretty amazing thank you so much i hope i i am uh, filling in that void and whenever i stop being of service to you just don't hold on just because you know you feel like you have to you will um you know what i mean they, they, there's always other people to learn from okay but if you think what i'm serving here is of value then thank you so much i aim to please okay right so we you gotta 
you gotta love us people as entrepreneurs. Okay, I will tell you exactly how we think. We spend four or five years trying to build an app or a website or that little gizmo that we have that we are so much into the picture. We, I mean, we are so much into the frame, we don't actually see the picture. Okay, what we don't realize is our clients are being bombarded with people with the same products, with the same benefits, with the same features. All right, what is then setting us apart? What is then making somebody make that financial decision to say, you know what, I'll buy stuff from Francesco, I'll buy stuff from Peter, I'll buy stuff from Nicole. All right, that's why I'm saying we gotta, gotta really love, um, you know, us as entrepreneurs. You know, our passion and excitement about how innovative or how new the products are that we're building or we, we, we're trying to create, we tend to forget that the people that are gonna pay us with the money have needs, have wants, and they have problems that they need fixed. It's not that your pen writes any better than any other pen or it's, it's a darker ink than the other person. People just want something scribbled. They don't want the bells and the whistles. And in your marketing, are you putting in the benefits so that the customer actually understands why they need to do business with you? Right? We all love talking about our products with each other. Do you know what I mean? We all love talking to people in the groups that would never buy from us anyway. That makes us so um, you know, oblivious to the fact that the people that actually pay our, um, you know, our bills, the people that actually buy from us are people that are outside of our bubble or our circles. All right, look at this. If you're all coaches within one group on Facebook, it's fine. You learn from the others. But are those coaches going to buy your coaching program? All right, because the thing is, when we start, you know, working on something, it becomes our first language. Okay, when you start speaking in your first language, you will then have to go and translate that language to other people that don't hear you or people that don't understand you. All right, we then tend to think the people that are around us actually are supporting us while in actual fact we are nipping ourselves or we're actually shooting ourselves in the foot because those people will never purchase from you anyway. So we now start detailing all the features and all the functionalities of our offerings and the people in those little groups understand us. You know why? Because them too, that's their first language. But how are you going to explain that to Peter who's never heard of what, um, you know, mindset is? All right. So now that's where you need to start crafting a message that goes and speaks to that particular person who then pays you. And that's the reason why we're not actually making sales because we are we are just surrounded with people that are supporting us, but are not paying or purchasing from us. OK, Francesco says that is the hardest part unless you mastered the concept of your product or your service. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is. Us marketers, we are frequenting marketing groups, we're frequenting coaching groups, we're frequenting other business people's groups. It's okay. But if you're going to be pitching people in that group, they understand you. But the person who actually is out there, who doesn't, who hasn't yet heard about your product or your service, is the person you need to be speaking to. And I think that's where we are all failing. We get all these people liking our comments, liking our posts, but it doesn't translate into money. And that's what is happening with a lot of us because the people that we are hanging around, the people that are in our circles are people that would never purchase our product, period. So we then get really, really, you know, laser focused on getting people to love our products, getting people to, to, to judge how our product goes, but they're still not paying us. They're still not making that purchase. All right. So, you know, we, we then really, really get caught up in what we do, how we do it, just trying to impress the next industry professional. But who is actually paying for your services? It's the person that's not even in that group. You know? So you, 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 you go out there and you're actually questioning how you can possibly improve your product and the people you're asking to help you are the people that will never pay from you. And it's usually, it's usually when you're using too much jargon or when somebody approaches me and they're like, oh, so what, what's happening in your life right now? And, uh, or, or speaks in that coachy code, you know, that coach, 
language of them trying to be more intelligent than you. I just look at them and I'm thinking, can you tell me if John Doe, who is um, out there and is maybe really, really looking for your services, are they going to understand the concepts that you're trying to bring across there? Yeah? So people don't really care what the product does or if it, if it leaves you from this place to that place or whatever. All they want is what's in it for them. They only care about how much it's going to improve their business, which is the why you are actually in business for, to help other people realize that they can get help from you. And the sooner you learn how to ditch the focus on, on, on your particular product or your particular system, the better you start actually getting customers and actually getting paid for your services. And the more you will start getting attention from the people that you want to actually vote for you using their credit card. And your sales will start accelerating. Because right now we're focusing on perfecting our, our sales pitch. Right, we're, we're focusing on perfecting that sales pitch, but we're not telling the person who's meant to buy why they need to be purchasing that particular product from you. People are never going to understand the benefits of any service or any product until you tell them. Yeah, so it's just one of those things. So I figured that's where the whole disconnect is happening. We're almost halfway through June and some of us haven't really made or scrapped the, the barrel of the kind of sales that we need to have made, the kind of money that we need to have made for this year. So you need to figure out, is your message actually speaking to the benefits or exactly what it is that that person needs to achieve? Because people don't buy what, they buy who they are, they want to become. So if you're a tr transitional or transformational coach, speak to what is going to happen or speak to why they need to engage with your service. Are they going to fit into those clothes? Are they going to fit into that suit? Are they going to look amazing? Are people going to love them at a party? Because that's the person they want to become. So you want to speak to that person. So for most customers, guys, for most clients or customers that I really, really come across, you know, the things they really care about, especially the people that I speak to, they want to know how is my service going to generate more revenue for them. They want to know how will I help them lower their costs? How will I help them lower their ad spend and get more leads? How will I help them get more profits and how will I make their business more enjoyable? They don't care that I've got a blueprint that does what, what, what. This is nothing to them. All they want is where are the profits, what am I getting, etc., etc. And how is, is anything that I'm going to create on their website going to increase the user experience for their customers or their employees if they're a big company? Do you know what I mean? So, so there, there are other things that they might then look at, but most of these are like the really, really big ones. How does it in, in improve my revenue? How does it make me a better person? Because they want to buy the person they're going to become. Whatever is in between is, is nonsense to them. Okay, so when, when you find people that are selling, you know, um, weight loss or whatever, they start talking about the food. People don't care about the food. People care about fitting into that wedding dress. People care about being hugged in the club or dancing samba. That's what they care about. So the bigger the emotional impact your product or your service helps them to achieve, you know, any of the goals that they have in life, the more attention you will get. All right. So you want to make sure you are speaking to the person they want to become. Figure out what your clients want to be in five years, in three years or in 10 years. So start speaking towards that and reverse engineer your sales pitch from there. So you want more revenue. This is then what we will do. We'll get you more revenue, but you got to do A, B and C in order to actually achieve what you want. All right. So if you're going to be um, calculating, maybe the steps are okay. You know, the um, when you actually know 
what your customer aspires for. Or if you can actually articulate your customer's pain, they will automatically assume you've got a solution to their problems. And that is when sales automatically start happening. All right. So it's not a one click process where you just put out something and then people automatically get it. All right. And then uh, Francesco says, I did that today. It worked like magic. Can you explain what you did today, Francesco, so that we sort of um, all understand what, what we're doing there? OK, so um, I might just give you a small sort of case study with one of my um, real estate clients. They're called uh, Kay and Burton. They sell um, pretty much $4 million uh, properties within Australia. I mean, from, from like 4 million, from like 3.5 million to $4 million products. All right, so these are the houses that you just don't shop on a, on a, on a real estate website. These are the kind of houses that you have your eyes on as a future goal. But for them to be able to sell these sort of properties, they got to appeal to a person when they are still in consideration stage. All right. They got to tell the person how it's going to make them look good. How many parties they're going to host within that property, how their family is going to look. They're not going to have to just sell the house because the house on its own is very expensive and somebody cannot think any further than what they're earning right now. But if they then sell the aspiration, they then sell the emotion of how happy they're going to be, how much of their status is going to go up, because that's all that matters with people. Status. Is it going to make them look good? Is are people going to like them? Are they going to get more smiles, more numbers? Whatever appeals to that person's status, that's what you need to sell to. All right, so this is what they were doing before. They were just putting in all the nicely lit houses, you know, every time that they are, um, you know, trying to advertise houses, they just put, you know, the nicely lit houses and, and, and take pictures at an angle. And I was like, no, start putting out content and really appeal to those people in the lifestyle magazines and in, 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 in holiday magazines. When somebody is in that mood, they automatically know that that's where my future is headed to. And then they're in a frame of mind to start paying attention. And I'm not going to lie, their, you know, retention rates and their uh, interaction on their website went. Phew. And for me, that was return on investment on them. And they are now excited because now they've got a list of people that can actually now start marketing to bit by bit. Before they were just saying, oh, here's a house. But now they have a strategy. So you want to make sure that you know exactly what your customers' aspirations are, who they want to be, where they really want to be, and what it is that they want out of having a transaction with you. Because if you cannot provide that, it's going to be difficult for them to actually fathom or register why they need to go with you as opposed to your opponent. You should always remember that people are always trying to escape from something going towards um you know a good thing they're trying to run away from pain so whatever their pain is don't try and speak to that pain try and speak to what they aspire to become all right if somebody wants to become a lawyer don't tell them it's going to be seven years they might give up tell them oh when you're a lawyer you'll be wearing these suits you'll be walking into a courtroom and people respect you and they will go in because that's the status they want but if you start selling them on the seven years and the assignments and, um, you know, all the uh, hurdles they got to go through, humans are just designed to run away from what they don't want. Anything that's hard, anything that's going to, you know, be a painful thing to them, they want to run away from them. So if you actually know what that thing is, then you've got them. OK, so you don't want to lead with the cutting edge features of your product or your cutting edge features of your website, etc., etc. You want to appeal to their real, real ones. And once you've got that, the why is the way to go. Do you know what I mean? At the end of the day, you are selling compelling stories, not products. You are selling the, pro the stories that they will talk about to their people. You're selling the, the, the stories that they will talk about whenever they are out at the barbecue with their friends or whatever. That's what you're selling. And you got to give them a reason to tell your story. 
Because at the end of the day, that's the reason why sales are not coming in. Because we're selling on, you know, the what, the, the what of the product. We're not selling the why at all. And that's just not you. Everybody else that I speak to, I'm, I'm like, so what, what, what's your service? And they go, oh, yeah, I help you, um, you know, uh, stop uh, or what can I say? Oh, I help you lose weight or I help you because all of those things have been regurgitated in the market. What is the actual benefit of somebody engaging with your service? What is the actual benefit that somebody would grab if they didn't go with you and went with somebody else? Okay, a lot of people lead with the product. All right, they're typically very, very excited about their new product. You know why? Because you've been working on it. What's there not to, to excite you? Because have you ever noticed, um, I've, I've got a kid, right? If you've got a kid, your kid is the most cutest baby in the world. Even if they're ugly as hell with a flat nose and eyes looking like that, they're still a cute kid in your eyes. Because you, you, that's what you're used to, you know? So at the end of the day, it's just one of those. Um, Francisco said, can you give an example for a Facebook ad expert? Be, um, can you be specific about that? As in the person that wants to do Facebook ads or a Facebook ad expert that's, uh, I'm not getting your question there, all right? So you want to make sure that you're not bogged into trying to sell what, you know, features, um, um, uh, with your product you want to make sure that you put out the benefit you already take the customer on a journey of where they actually want to end up so that it's easier for them to already see them themselves as being in the whole um you know as arrived where they want to go so trish trish how's it going my love <laughs> i haven't seen you in a minute so Trish says, bomb drop right there. Thanks, Prosper. <laughs> Pretty good. Hope you've been fine. And Francesca says, pitching what you provide with that, the features. Oh, sparking emotion. Okay, so if you're going to be a, um, what do you call, a, a, a Facebook ads expert. All right. So what, what do people want? People don't want Facebook ads. People want revenue. People want lasting clients. People want relationships, okay? But how do they then get to those lasting clients? How do they get profitable businesses? They use the vehicle of Facebook ads, all right? So you're not, like, this is what I do every single day. I'm not going to tell you uh, about the SEO. I'm going to tell you where you want to be, which is having a business that's profitable and enjoyable. What I then put in between is, 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 is the mechanism of, you know, after you've understood what it is that we, um, that I provide. Okay. So you say I help people increase and automate sales through Facebook marketing. Okay. So you want to figure out where are they in their sales? Is it, do they really want to increase sales or do they want the sales to actually be consistent? All right. So you never know what people want. All right. And then, uh, Andrew Brown says, it's been a while. I'll start with product knowledge first, then take them on a trip leading to emotional reason to buy. That's where I'm taking my prospects. You're doing amazing. You're doing fantastic. And I see, um, Andrew Brown. How are you doing by the way? Facebook ads should be the bridge connecting, allow the client to person to, uh, walk right over and begin. Exactly. All right. Because Facebook ads are a media. All right. In marketing, there's three things, um, Francesco. There's three things, the message, the market, the media. Back in 1963, all right, Coca-Cola was still surviving. What was their message? Open happiness, right? And back in 1963, they were selling pieces of, um, you know, they were selling bottles of Coca-Cola using whatever media was available then, which was maybe newspapers or uh newspapers or uh, radio. Now in 2017, they still have the same message, which is open happiness. What, what media are they using? They might be using Facebook ads. Okay. So Facebook ads are a media. They cannot be the be it and end all. They are part of a strategy. They are part of a grand scheme of things that can be done in order to actually help people get maximum revenues and retain those clients once they have them. 
All right. So you want to be really, really, really careful because if you're going to base your business on a piece of media, what if that stops functioning? All right. You're going to have to start all over again. All right, Francesco, you really want to look into that because if you're going to base your business as the Facebook, um, you know, ads expert, what's going to happen if your client doesn't need ads, but just needs a content strategy? I know it's good to specialize and to put yourself in a pigeonhole, but at the end of the day, what if what has just happened to Snapchat is going to start happening to Facebook? You know why? Because of the new VR that's coming in. There's a new ad tech, you know, world that's going on out there. So I wouldn't put all my eggs in the basket of being a Facebook ads expert. And besides, the algorithm is constantly changing. Every day you got to keep yourself, you know, on your toes, just trying to make sure you're on top of everything. So, you know, you know, it's just one of those things. What story are you telling through those ads that you want your customer to then say at the end of the day, wow, Francesco actually helped me to achieve X. Why are people exactly paying you? Are they paying you to increase sales or are they paying you to actually have a business that's profitable and enjoyable? So that's what you want to speak to. It might not be a problem of sales. So, so what happens if, I'm got, if I've got the right kind of sales, but maybe I, I just want to um, you know, get a, a little bit of brand awareness around my product, can I still not use ads? You see, so that's why it's very crippling to base your business on media, Francesco. All right. So at the end of the day, you know, the best teams or the best salespeople that I know are they, they must uh, or they sell through storytelling. What story is your customer going to tell after they're finished working with you? So you, you want to artistically lay out, you know, the big problem that's in, that's in the industry and then help your clients deal with that. And then you slowly wrap them in with the elegant solution of Facebook ads. Okay. All right. So, you know, it's not until a few meetings here and there that somebody would then think Facebook ads is the solution. Before you even go in and talk about any of the products, you want to detail them first about what their aspirations are. What do they see their company doing in five years? What do they see their company doing in 10, 15 years? And then from then on, you say, you know what? If you could plug in a few bit of ads, it might help. Okay, is that, is that what you're asking there, Francesco? So let, let, me, let me maybe give you an example before we, we fly off here. Your business is about social media amplification, right? So me, let's say your tool is those ads that you, you're, you know, you're putting out there and you say, like you're saying there, Francesco, that you want to help people increase their sales, etc., etc. That's a wrong pitch. You know, it, it, by talking just how great your technology is going to be and all the bells and whistles, which is what you're going to end up doing. Do you know what I mean? And, and how your service is going to be working. The client really does not care about that. What if that client's um, cl customers are not on Facebook? They use another media. Okay, and also there's hundreds of other companies that are, you know, peddling them a similar product. If you just go in with Facebook, 500 other people are approaching them and, and 6,000 other ones coming from India. So all you're doing is just creating a lot more confusion and then it's going to be very hard for people to trust if you're just peddling your business on a single piece of media. So to them, it means nothing. Do you know what I mean? Whether Facebook or not, what happens if they their clients are on, are on LinkedIn? All they just want is not to make a bad decision by actually, um, you know, going through with you. So you want to make sure that you show them that you will help them get those customers, retain them, wow them, or have a business that's profitable and actually enjoyable. Do you notice the difference in what I'm talking about there? You see, in the first example, you're talking about you. But in the second example that we're talking about, what is it that they want in five years and 10 years? You're talking about them. People only want to hear what's in it for them, Francesco. 
And more importantly, if you've got their attention, you know, whether you're talking about the clear metrics or how you're going to increase their sales, etc., etc., and you're and you're talking maybe about their business, you want to help paint a picture of how you would come in and how your service is going to be any better than Susan across the room there. So the only thing that you're going to be comparing and competing with is competing on price, Francesco, because you already led in with Facebook. They're not going to hear anything else on how it's going to be different, etc., etc. You want to speak to the person who they want to become. Now, you cannot compare that on price. You know why? Because that is priceless. All right. So the, 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 the key point really here is in case. You want to speak to them personally. And you really want to make sure that you've got that right from the get. By weaving in the storyline of who they will become, that's who they are going to buy. And that's the why, the reason why they will pay you to do whatever you say you're going to do there, Francesco. And that's why they will come back for more. Because if you lead in with being Facebook, if somebody says, okay, I'll do it for less than $100, automatically you're now being compared on price. Because truth be told, nobody wants to feel like they're being sold on something. You know, they want to make sure that it's a personal win. And if the smart decision is only going to be a comparison on apples and apples, they will go on price. So you want to make sure you're solving problems for your clients that it, it, it makes it a no brainer that you're the only person that's actually really good at that. The better you craft your story that actually speaks to them, not a platform or a media. Do you know what I mean? The better your sales success is going to be Francesco. Jeez, I've never really dwelt on one person like this for a long time. It's not an attack on you, man. It's not, it's not anything. I just really wanted to put out the, 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 the fact that you need to sell on compelling stories and you don't need to base your business on a piece of media. Because market, uh, message market media, media is constantly changing. I'll give you a, a, a swift example right now. Look at Snapchat. Two years ago, Snapchat was the go-to platform, but right now it's being swept, you know, off their balance by what Facebook is doing right now. So you don't want to base your business or your sales pitch on a piece of media because media fluctuates. Okay, so only once you hook your customers on why, then you can backfill your, your sales pitch or whatever with the what. And after you've already got their attention, because the what alone may simply put them to sleep and your revenues would be on life support. All right. I got to go, guys. But I hope this one was a really good one. Sorry it was um, not directed at you, but I think I put the message across. If anybody has questions, let's continue the conversation uh, in, the, in the comments below so that we actually uh, make sure we got this going. All right. People pay for their wants. Right. Who do they want to become? What do they see themselves as? And that's who you got to speak to the person in the future. I'm out of here, guys.